a lot of times when we lead people to the Lord, they want to know, okay, what's next? And if we don't help guide them on the steps to a deeper understanding of who God is and how they can have a close relationship with him personally, we leave them a little bit floundering. And so, but what was the most broken moment that you knew you needed to cry out to the Lord? In 2012, I really hit the wall. And I'd been a Bible teacher at that point for you know about eight or nine years and just teaching God's word, getting closer to him. But I had still been carrying around a lot of baggage from my childhood and my teenage years with um, emotional baggage that was hindering not only my relationship with my Lord, Lord, but it was it was also hindering my relationship with my family, with my husband, with my kids, with um, just in general. I was very insecure. I was operating. What I always like to say is, I was making fear-based decisions. Uh, if I needed to make an important decision, or sometimes even a small decision, I would base it on the fear of rejection, the fear of failure, the fear fear of um, being embarrassed, or or what other fear, how this might turn out, the unknown. And instead of walking in true faith and trusting God to guide me and lead me as I'm doing today. So in that time period in 2012, um, was struggling, my marriage was struggling, actually, and I just kind of hit the floor. I was uh, actually in Israel with my oldest son. I was on a church trip. And I remember um, getting to that point and saying, OK, God, I don't know what to do next. I don't know if this marriage is our marriage is going to survive. And I can't fix this. I mean, I'm I'm a type type A personality. I like to fix things, <laughs> but I just couldn't fix it. And I think God, when when He wants to move us in a new direction, He will allow us to go through something that only He can help us get through, or only He can help us manage. And so I did. I hit the floor and I said, Lord, I don't know what to do next. I, I, I've tried everything. I've personally done all I can do. You've got to tell me the next step that I need to take. And I knew in that very moment, it wasn't audible, but it, it was the Holy Spirit speaking to me and said, I want you to write down on this sheet of paper in your hotel room exactly what is truly going on in your life and your marriage. And I want you to take it to your pastor who is he and his wife had been a dear friend of ours for like 15 years. They had no clue. I was hiding everything. And that's what we do. We're afraid to let people see the real us when we're struggling. But the Lord said, I need you to reveal this so that you can begin to work on this and you can begin to get this behind you because it's hindering not only your relationship with those you love, but it's hindering your relationship with me. And so I knew at that very moment, I had to have the courage to reveal what was truly going on in my life. So there might be somebody out there who um, is also struggling maybe in their marriage as well. Um, and they're thinking that whatever they do outside the Bible, outside of God mm. is going to fix it, mm. you know, find something that that'll fill that hole. What can you say to a person like that? Well, I can tell you that, I did try to fix it um, for we were we'd been married 26 years at that time. And I, I had tried everything, um, but really I was part of the problem. I was trying to change everything and everyone around me. And I wasn't looking at what needed to change in my life. I think what I learned at that time, I began, I went into counseling and I, I knew God's word and I loved the Lord and loved his word. But everything was still broken. And so seeking God and finally surrendering and saying, I don't have this, Lord, I need you to lead me. He really, truly led me to a godly counselor and pastor and um, therapist that could help me identify the emotional barriers that were keeping me bound, um, go back and look at the things that I had gone through as a child and as a teenager and begin to bring the, those wounds out into the open where they could be healed. And so I spent about two years um, just diving into therapy and counseling and God's word. You know, I think it's very important. Um, God, God's word is an amazing 
amount of hope and healing and guidance. And God himself through the Holy Spirit leads us to the truth. But there are quite often he wants us to seek help from others who can lift us up, sharpen us, encourage us, and help us heal some of those wounds because the psychological wounds can be are real. And we need help breaking down and talking about some of the things that are in that way that, that keep us from moving forward. So I was very um, grateful for this gifted counselor, pastor, and for the Lord working with me through that time to begin to heal and to begin to move forward. And what God has done in my life over the last 10 years since I stepped into the truth and I stepped into that healing has been absolutely nothing but um, a God experience uh, through our ministry, through all the resources he's had me develop. Because once you've walked through something like that, Nancy, you just you want to share it. You know, God gives us the passage in um, 2 Corinthians 1, 4, I believe it is, that where he says, I want you to comfort others with the same comfort that I have given you. Well, that was all over me and I, I couldn't hold it in. And so as I began to heal, I thought, you know, there are people out here that are dealing with the same thing. There are Christians walking around shells of trying to put on this ideal of perfection when inside they're crumbling and they need to come out and they need to take some practical steps to move forward. And so God gave me the privilege and ability to birth a ministry called Courage for Life that helps people walk through practical steps for emotional healing and spiritual growth. We're a discipleship ministry, but sometimes we need to break down some of the obstacles that are standing in the way of what God wants to do in our life. Mm -hmm. So can you give some examples of how God's word has turned some of these people around? Oh goodness. Well, we work now today, we work with inmates. So for, for me, I began in 2014, I birthed a ministry, nothing I would have ever done in the past. And when I did birth the ministry, I sensed the Lord saying, I want you to birth a nonprofit. And I said, this is a terrible time I'm healing from, um, you know, all of this that I've been coming through. And, but I did because I sensed the Lord was not letting up. I birthed the ministry and started, I wrote my first book and then the book began to go into the prison system. I had a dear friend who, who um, had a local County jail she was ministering in. And she says, I'm going to take your book courage for life in there. I'm going to, I'm going to work with the women and work through these seven steps to courage with them. And she came out and she said, Oh my goodness, these women are being impacted. This commit to change, the C step, the overcome the obstacles, as they're working through the exercises of growing closer to the Lord and and removing barriers that are in the way. The women are beginning to open up and beginning to heal and beginning to embrace their identity in Christ for the first time. And so God continued to allow us to um since that time we've 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 put together the first fully female voiced audio Bible in 2017. There's a couple more that have come out, I think, since then. But we did that for women who'd experienced trauma. And it's been a life-changing experience and other resources. But but I'm telling you that the main thing was uh, seeing these women who have isolated themselves, uh, whether they're in a church pew or whether they're behind prison bars. There are many of us that are imprisoned because we're stuck, we're stuck in a place and we can't move forward, uh, whether it's in our marriage or our job or our family, or like many of the women and men now that we work with, they're physically behind prison bars. They have a lot of shame and self-condemnation to overcome. But God is the healer of all things. He loves us unconditionally. And so when we walk through steps, practical steps to embrace our identity in Christ, and embrace his unconditional love and forgiveness, we can heal and we are seeing lives changed and transformed from the inside out. Wow, that's wonderful. That's what we want to hear, transform mm -hmm. lives, because that's what Jesus wants, right? This is Amen. what we are called to do. And so what can you tell someone out there that, that has tried everything and <clears throat> nothing is working? Oh, I, I can say I, I've been where you are. I know exactly how you feel. You're exhausted. You're, you're at a loss for not only words, but for that next step. You're not sure if you could take the next step. 
maybe you were like I was and you just want to run away because, and you're not going to, I mean, I, my, I had a sweet family, I had grandchild, my first grandchild at that time. And it was like, but inside you just want to disappear. So what I want to say to you is seek the Lord and find a safe sister. Or if you're a gentleman listening to this broadcast, find a safe brother, a godly friend, a godly family member, someone who you can tell the truth to, reveal your secret, reveal your struggle, find that safe person in your life that you can trust to say, will you pray with me? Will you encourage me? I'm struggling and here's what's really going on in my life. And then be a safe person to that person too, because there's not one of us that's not struggling with something. We are fellow strugglers. We are all in need of our savior, Jesus, and we're in need of one another um, Mm -hmm. to encourage one another. So I say, reach out, ask for help and also seek God's guidance because it was the Lord was the first and foremost thing. He's the one who led me in the step on who to reach out to and God will lead us to the right people. Go to his word, seek comfort, seek guidance. He wants to talk to you personally. Yeah. I mean, so many things here to, to consider. And there's just, you know, people don't really understand how God's word can change their life. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so somebody out there, maybe they already know the Lord and, um, how maybe they need a method to lead someone to God's word. How would you say, go about that? Well, the first thing that I want to bring up, because when you said that a lot of people don't realize how transforming God's word is, I want to say, First of all, if you've never heard of the power of four, this was a study that was done by the Center for Bible Engagement, and they did research, extensive research, and found that people who are in God's word four or more times each week, their lives look completely different than than those who are not, because God's word helps to ground us. It helps us to drown out the worldly lies around us and replace it with truth from God's word. So when we're in God's word, we're less likely to make poor decisions or um, let our mouths, you know, get us into trouble, (laughs) which can happen so easily. And and I'm, I'm guilty as well. We all struggle with this, but That's very, very important. Um, So how can you also help someone to to know and understand that God's word is transformational? I was at a speaking engagement this past weekend, and we were talking about the fact that sometimes if you're in a room of nonbelievers, you're in the boardroom or you're at work, if there's you're in a place where you can't really literally speak Jesus out loud or it's not you don't feel that that's the appropriate setting, you can be Jesus. People will recognize the difference when you, when, when they're struggling, they're not having a good day and you're kind and you're gentle, even though they're, they're offensive to you, but you come back gentle, you come back with love or with concern or uh, a quick prayer for them. But so, you know, where can they find this book? Courage for Life and um, and more about you and the resources? Oh, absolutely. You can go to my website at Courage for Life. Dot O-R-G. We have a team there. We have a discipleship team and um, there's there's teaching, video teaching, Bible studies, but you can find it in our bookstore. You can find it there. Of course, any any other bookstore or um, online source, you can definitely find the Courage for Life Study Bible for Women and the Courage for Life Study Bible for Men. Um, but do come check out our website because we have a lot of great content on there. We have a team that really wants to engage with you. Uh, we're on social media, Facebook and Instagram all the time doing um, discipleship teaching and so forth. I've got a YouTube channel, uh, Courage for Life, uh, Ann White, and you can find teaching on books and interviews and so forth on that YouTube channel. And um, then also on In Touch Plus, I'll be uh, my teaching airs on In Touch Plus as well, which is a 24 hour um, channel that shows incredible uh, Bible teachers. And uh, I just happen to be one that they've they've blessed by allowing me to be a part of that great team. Now, that is a blessing. Jenny. What would you like to leave my audience with today? You know what I'd like to say is the fact that we can walk through life comfortable right where we are, 
or we can put our yes on the table and surrender to God's will for our life. And we can go on, may not be an easy adventure, but we can go on the adventure of a lifetime because God has prepared great things for you. God has great things in store and it's not going to be easy. But if he calls you to do something, just say yes and take practical steps in the right direction. He wants to take you places you could never think of, dream of, or imagine. Just trust him and take those steps. If this ministry has blessed your life, would you like, subscribe, and share this with others? We are here to fulfill the Great Commission. So be sure to come back next time for another episode of The Call with Nancy Sebado. You'll be blessed. Do you listen to the call of God? Because God speaks to you every day. Are you listening to the call? What sound is-